So we know what we're going to do. In our program, what's it going to do? It's going to ask the person for a number. It's going to check the user's input. If it's not a number, it's going to say, no, you must enter a number. Then it's going to add up all the numbers between zero and the number that the person entered. And then it's going to ask them if they want to do the code, run the code again or not at the end. So if we take, for example, the number, if the user enters four, the output of the code is going to be one plus two plus three plus four, which equals ten. Right. And then we're going to use the structure diagram to test out if it's going to work for us. And then we're going to make a um, testing plan, and we'll go through the testing plan in another lesson. Here is the structure diagram that we've got at the moment. And remember, the squares are actions, um, those ovals or rounded corners are loops, and the hexagons are decisions, okay? And this is new, this is a procedure. We haven't done procedures before, but the procedures on the Moodle that you can use for this, and I've tidied it up so you can use it exactly like it is. And this means run a procedure with the lines around the edges. So this is a procedure, it's quite separate, and we can call it as many times as we want. So what does our code do? Alright, so the first thing we do is we come in and we set the value of the variable again to y. And the reason we do this is we want the loop to run first time, every time. So we set it to y. We basically what we're saying is set the variable so that the next loop runs at least once. And then this is our, there's an oval, so this is our while loop. So it says while, again equals y, y do all this. When we get to the end here, we loop back to the again, does again now equal y? And because the user's asked to do it again here, it depends on what the user's typed in. Okay, so the way the structure diagram works is, we work our way down until we get to the end, and then we jump back up to the next one. So if we ran through this, dollar again equals y, while again equals y, well it is for the first time, so we do this code here. Let's imagine we've done it all, and then we output here, do you want to run it again? And if the user says yes, we come back up to here, does again equal y? It still does, because they said y. So we do all this again, and we come to here. Now if they type in n, we come back up to here, and we don't run it again, because again no longer equals y, so we output goodbye, and we finish the program. Right? So, first time around it does equal y, so we set two variables to zero. We set total to zero and count to zero. Then we say, please enter a number. And we accept that number into a variable called input. And while input is not a number, and this is why we use this, because it makes it nice and easy in our while loop. That's why we've got this subroutine. And all this does, it says, does input contain digits? The input to the subroutine, does it contain digits? Yes, it does. Does it contain non-digits, sorry? Yes, it contains non-digits. So we return true, it's not a number, that is true. And if it's only digits, we return false. So it's not true that this is not a number. It's a double negative there, okay? So if it is not a number, it's true. And if it is a number, it returns false. So while it's not a number, we do this loop. We say, no, wrong, that's not a number. And we ask them to put it in again. And then we come back to here, is it not a number now? No, that's still wrong. I said a number. No, not a decimal point. Oh, now it's a number and we can move on to here. What does this loop do? As long as count is less than what they've input, we're going to do some stuff here and then we output the total. Does that make sense? We good with that so far? Do you understand how it works or how we flow around it? Super. Okay. So, we're going to do a very simple test now. Now the purpose of this is that this is much quicker and simpler to draw this on a sheet of paper and test it on a sheet of paper. And then we know we've got our logic right. And then to put this into a program is then quite simple and all we have to worry about in the program is the syntax, getting the syntax right because we know our pro program logic is correct. So let's type in some inputs, okay? So first of all we're going to type in what 
And it's going to say that's not a number, if it's right, okay? So then we're going to type in 3, but that's not a number either, because it's the letters T-H-R-E-E. -E. This does not accept, not accept negative or decimals, okay? Because we're not working with those at the moment. So then we're going to put in 1.2, and that should say not a number. And then we're going to put in 3, and we should get the output. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6. And then it's going to ask us if we want to run it again, and we're going to say yes. And then we're going to put in 10, and that will give us 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10, which is 55. And then we're going to say no, and we should exit the program. So using this, we're now going to work through this and check if our program does what it should do. Any questions so far? So we're going to set ourselves up a little, a little table of our possible inputs. So all the variables we've got are dollar again, dollar count, dollar total, and dollar input. And we're going to go down filling these in as we go so we can keep up to date. And this is how you would do the testing for the assessment. Okay? You have a list of inputs and you have a list of things. Right. So we start off with dollar again equals y. The first thing we're doing. Y. Does again equal y? It does, so we're going to do this loop. Total equals zero. Count equals zero. Dollar input, get an input from the user, what input are we getting? What? Is input not a number? Is that true? True. It's true, it's not a number. So we say, no, that's wrong. Please enter input again. Right? And then we type in three. Three. Is three not a number? Is the word three not a number? That's true. No, that's not a number. Enter it again. So now we type in 1.2. In 1.2, it is a number, but it's, this was actually going to say it's not a number because it's got a decimal point in it. So it's going to say, no, that's not right either. Please try again. And then we're going to put in 3. And now for the first time, we're going to finish this loop and move over to here. Okay? So what is the input? It's 3. Count is 0. Does count? Is 0 less than 3? Yeah. So we're going to go to here. We're going to add 1 to count. Count plus plus is increment count by 1. So count becomes 1. And total equals total plus count. So total equals 0 plus 1, which is 1. Now we finish this bar, so we go back to here. Is count less than input? Yeah, yeah. Count is 1, input is 3. So it is still less than input. So we add 1 to count. And total equals total yeah, plus yeah. count. Sorry, you're right, thank you, sorry. 2, total equals total plus count, 1 plus 2 is 3. Alright, now count is 2, is 2 still less than 3? Yes it is, so we do this again. Count plus plus, that's now 3. Total equals total plus count, and that's 6. Is 3 less than 3? No. No, so we've finished, we move along. Output total. Total is 6. So we're here, so that's good, eh? We've got that right. Do we want to run this again? Put in the answer again. Y. Then we come back to here. Does again equal Y? So we come down to here. Set total to zero. Set count to zero. Ask for an input. This time we know what we're doing. We put in 10. 10. What? Okay, now we're going to go through this. Is zero less than ten? Yeah. We made the number a bit big, we haven't this thing So we add one to count, and we go zero plus one is one. And we add two to count the next time through, and that's three. And we add three to count, and that's six. And we add four to count, and that's ten. And we add five to count, and that's fifteen. And we add six to count, and that's twenty-one. And we add seven to count, and that's twenty-eight. And we add 8 to count, and that's 36. And we add 9 to count, and that's 45. And we add 10 to count, and that's 55. Is 10 less than 10? No. Yes. No? 
So we output 55. Ask to run it again. Now we say no. So we're not here, so we say goodbye. See how that works? See how it allows us to test the logic of our program without actually running the code? Yes, sure. So now the next thing we want to do is turn this into code. And that again is really easy. Because all we have to do is convert each of these one at a time into our code. 